Thank you so much for joining us. This is Woman 360. We have such an exciting show because we're talking to wonderful women in different aspects of society and happenings in our country. We're going to be talking HPV immunization. When it was introduced in uh, 2019, this was received with mixed feelings. Now, Child Health Week is in full swing. How is it being received now for the young female adolescent? We also meet Cecilia Zimba. She is Zika presidential aspirant. What's driving her and what is her story? We are also going to be talking about the mental state of women amid COVID as well as post-COVID. Issues of what uh, anxiety issues they're facing, is there depression and how can you beat this? These are more items on Woman 360. much for joining us. This is Woman360 and I am Judy Ngulube. Our very first guest is in studio already. Uh, Cecilia Zimba is standing for Zika presidential elections and we want to get to know her story. So we're going to start with, firstly, how are you? Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you, Judy, for this invitation. I'm very well today and how are you? I'm very fine, thank you. So getting to the big one, I know you've been vice president. Why are you running for president now, Zika. Well, Judy, I was actually the first uh, female to hold the position of Zika vice president. And having been a member of Zika from about 1999 to now and being very active in the affairs of the Institute, I felt it's that time in my life that I offered myself to the highest office in Zika, which is that of president. I think having served on council, on different uh, committees of council and having served as vice president of Zika, mm -hmm. I've acquired the relevant experience and in-depth knowledge and understanding of how Zika operates that I now offer myself to, to head the institute. All right. So first female vice president, if you become the president, will you be the first female or we've had females uh, at that position? In I Zika? will actually be the first female to serve as Zika president. Wow. Don't worry. Woman 360 is behind you. <laughs> so in I was reading your biography and some of the achievements that uh, you've achieved in the last three years as vice president, issues of advising government on national issues, developmental mm. issues. Mm. And when you talk about development, it's social economic development and for a third world country like ours there's always this frowning when a woman wants to head or lead uh, such an institution as Zika. What would you bring to the table in this regard? Well as you rightly say Zika in the in the act is actually mandated to be a chief advisor to government on various government uh, developmental issues and uh, throughout the years, I pay special tribute to my predecessors who have done a terrific job in ensuring that that mandate is actually carried on. There's a lot of uh, advice that Zika has been giving to various government institutions or to government itself. We have added input in policy issues, uh, guided government on various matters that actually affect the development of this country. So when you talk about uh, uh, national development and uh, having uh, uh, people that probably resist uh, women to take up uh, top roles, it's actually quite saddening to note that in this era we could have such resistance. But from what I see, from where I stand, the accountancy profession is um, one profession that is male dominated. 
there are very few women that have taken up the role. And one of the reasons that I'm actually inspired to take this position of Zika uh, president is to try and uh, stimulate interest in fellow women out there, help them, mentor them. You know, the profession of accountants is very key in every organization. There's not a single organization, Judy, that you go to and tell me that there's no accountant there. Be it a faith-based organization, you'll find there's a treasurer there. You go to a non-government, to a non-profit, a profit-making, the business community, they all need accountants. So we perform a very critical role. Mm. When I hear you talk about the accountancy profession being uh, male-dominated, for you as a female, what keeps you pushing forward, regardless of what you will hear, what you will see, or what might in, you know, li life happens in, in the profession. Mm -hmm. And if it always, go if it leans more to issues of uh, falling to know she's female, he's male, how do you push through that? Well, firstly, I think I have to understand what is the role of an accountant. The moment I do understand that role, it doesn't matter whether it's a male or a female doing it. But one thing I'll tell you, Females, it's a natural thing. We tend to pay a lot of attention to detail. And that is what is key in our profession. You need to be as accurate. And when you find a female produce work, you can more or less like take it without even verifying because you know how much a female pays so much attention to detail. Look at how we spend so much time in how we look, we want to make sure that everything is perfect. And even when we are doing our work, from my own experience, the, the female that I've worked with mainly have been very, very articulate and very observant of what they are doing because they always fear making a mistake and they want to be sure that what they are presenting is correct. There's usually an issue of honesty as well and transparency in what they are doing. So you feel very comfortable when you are getting uh, sets of accounts that have been presented by a female because you know that this female that has brought forward these uh, uh, financials to you has given you what is actually on the ground. Mm. Yeah. When um, a lot of people will talk about how you're going to balance and all that, but because it's so evident we have women who are getting to the discussion table, heading uh, organizations and institutions, it's, it, it's uh, enough uh, evidence that they are balancing. So I'm going to ask you how, what you're going to get from your social life, your uh, life away from being an accountant, that you will put again into the mm. accountancy profession and when you become president of Zika, what is that thing you will get from your social life into your professional life that will help? I think one thing that I'll bring from my so social life is that I'm one person who is very open and uh, embraces almost everybody. So in our profession, we've got young upcoming accountants, those that are looking for a future in this profession. And uh, I'm very approachable. So I'll be able to bring in certain activities probably at Zika that not only focus on uh, you know the serious business but there should be a time when accountants should just have a time to socialize. I think uh, the era of uh, living in a stressful and tense environment is long gone. You need to have a right balance. All work made uh, <laughs> Jack a dull boy I think they say. Yeah. What's your anchor message in becoming in in your process to becoming uh, Zika president, in you be aspiring to become the president, what's your anchor message? One of unity. What I'm saying is that it's one Zika and one profession. Why do I say that? When you look at uh, the accountancy profession, there are various qualifications. There will be an accountant who will tell you I'm ACCA qualified, I'm CIMA qualified, or I'm a CA Zambia qualified. But at the end of it all, we are all one accountant provided you meet the requirements that Zika needs in order for you to be registered either as an associate or a licensiate, I think you're a Zika member. So my message is of unity, one Zika, one accountant. And I'm also bringing to the table what I say is my confidence because I've been there. I've not started this job today. Mm -hmm. You need to hit the ground running. Zika is a big institution. 
I'm also saying I'm committed to the role. I think if you look at my track record, you will be able to see that for everything that I've been given to do, I've been able to do it to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're watching Women 360. Join me on the other side. The, the most fulfilled person in life is one that is doing something they're passionate about. He's been about. calling me. Meanwhile, the guy just wants to exploit your resource. Because I only want that person to be a mentor or to be my mentor. But exactly. what Men, at least in terms of awareness, live was about 55%. Look at the way society will look at us single moms. They have that notion that... Thank you so much for still watching Women 360. Be part of the conversation by going to our social media platform. Remember, we are Women 360 on that one. Give us your thoughts, your comments, and just be interactive with us. We're now getting into the medical uh, side of things when it comes to women. I have Madame Germana Chileshe. She is a clinical psychologist. Now, in a time of COVID, uh, quarantine and then out of it, and life still goes on, others losing jobs. What is the mental state of women in our country? We've heard various stories in the media talking about depression, suicides, uh, GBV going on. So how can one contain this or even prevent getting into a slam of depression? Thank you so much for coming through. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Does, what does confinement do? When you talk about what's been happening in our, in, around the world, not just in Zambia, issues of COVID uh, uncertainty on either your business as a woman or your career, what does that do to one psych? Mm, let's talk about uh, you know, quar being quarantined mm -hmm. in homes. As a woman, uh, you have children, you have husbands to look after, you have dependents, and uh, uh, if you are a businesswoman, businesses are not running smoothly. And uh, now, mm -hmm. where do you get money from to feed your family? So as a woman, you go into a panic mood, anxiety, depression. So this COVID-19 really has brought people to a standstill. When, when it comes to uh, mental issues, uh, African society, Zambian society, we usually not take them as, um, lack of a better term, as important as they should. Mm -hmm. They look upon, look upon them like it's something you can just uh, sleep, sleep out, you, you sleep and you wake up in the morning and you'll be fine. How much importance has been attached to this and ha how are the cases that have been coming through in this period been? Uh, I'm a psychologist, mm -hmm. so I'll need, I'll need to talk about all psychological related issues, either in homes or whatever, whether you are depressed, you have social economic issues, you've got uh, medical issues. The most important thing is to seek help, to seek counseling. In this era where we are, if you have any psychological issue, let me say women usually, they will tend to seek psychological help. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you compare to men, men usually will pretend that all is well. And then maybe he tend to resolve to alcohol and the drug usage. But I'm saying, when you, uh, you, when you have psychological related issues, if they are not handled properly, 
which, which, which are the steps a person going through this can take? Because I hear people talk about you can meditate, you mean if you have some uh, time with your girlfriends and relax, that is also therapy on its own. Is that enough or someone just needs to go and see uh, a therapist? Let me tell you, if you are depressed, it's a mental related problem. So it has got levels. Mild, where you can be able to cope, you are working, you say, you know, you can do your own things, trying to improve on whatever problems you have. Then there's moderate, whereby now, you know, things are not well, you are trying to isolate yourself, you can't talk to anybody, uh, and then it's severe, really, where you just go totally with mental breakdown. You can't talk to anybody, you can't eat, you stay in your room the whole day. People talk about depression not being curable. Is it true? Depression is curable. Chinama Hospital, that's why I'm trying to explain on the, on the levels. I would advise people who have psychological related problems, they should not wait until it goes to severe. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You are watching Woman 360. Join me on the other side. Thank you so much for still watching Women 360. Get interactive with us on social media. We are Women 360 on that one. Now, when you hear HPV, what comes to your mind? I know in 2019, what was <laughs> coming in people's minds was issues of, ah, uh, ah, uh, they're going to put something in my daughter that I won't <laughs> like, or they want to just give me something else. I have Dr. Sharon Kapambwe to help us talk about this. How are you? Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having me. I'm doing fine. Okay, <laughs> nice. So when I take you back to 2019, so it must have been mid-2019. Yes, the about the same time, maybe, yeah. HPV about a year. was received with mixed feelings. Society was giving us all sorts of myths. How did that go? And with Child Health Week in swing now, how is that going to pan out as well? So last year, remember, we started the national um, rollout, mm -hmm. which meant that uh, we had made HPV mm -hmm. part of routine immunization, the same way that we had. Uh, measles, BCG, has been given routinely to a certain group. Um, and this time we were giving 14-year-olds mm. in school and out of school. Our target for last year was to vaccinate um, of 300, about 310,000 girls in school and out of school. And we managed to vaccinate over 250,000. So we had... Um, a coverage of about 80,000, 80% wow. last year. Uh, so even all that talking, we yes, still got yes. a number like 80%. 80% of the girls that we had targeted to vaccinate were vaccinated. So it's, it's, a, it's a situation of Ilias <laughs> Japan Saka. People are saying this, but what's happening in reality so, is different, so isn't that, it? So that is what we always say. I think most of the time people do have a lot of questions and they could be having some misinformation. So you have to go on the ground and inform. We involved the Ministry of Education, General Education, that came in fully, religious leaders, traditional leaders, and just community mobilization and making people understand and answering them through media, like coming here today. And we found that 80% of the girls were vaccinated. I can tell you provinces like Luapula, out of their target, they managed to get 92% of the girls vaccinated. What has been the biggest fear with this? So one of the, the, some of the common things that we have is that people will say no um, side effects which are going to um, affect my children. And when we say every drug has a side effect, that's where we should begin from. And um, side effects that are common to HPV that we have seen within. In fact, in case someone is uh, hearing HPV for the first time. So this is the human papilloma virus. Mm -hmm. And this is the causative agent for cervical cancer. And we know that in Zambia, cancer of the cervix is the most common cancer that we have. And we have close to 25% mm -hmm. of the cancers that we see every year is because of cervical cancer. Sadly, it's also the one that causes the most um, deaths among the cancers that are recorded in this country.
Mm, okay. So what are the side effects of, uh, you know, the vaccine? So from what we've noted from the girls, they will complain about pain at the site of injection, and they will also have a bit of reddening, depending on if you're dark like me, it's probably not going to show any red, at the site of injection as well. And those are basic and or swelling at the site of injection. The common things that people will get when they get an injection is what we have noted. Uh, what I should be able to tell the public is that what we have, we have a lot of things in place to make sure that if any drug is causing more harm than good, it can be taken off the market. Mm -hmm. But HPV is one of the safest drugs that we have. So those are the side effects that we've noted. It's just about pain around the site of injection that we have noted about the reddening, um, the swelling that the girls will complain of when they, when they have been vaccinated. Okay. Basically, that's so what So what's have. the age range we're talking about? Do we have an age range of vaccine for the girls? So what we are giving in, in, in Zambia is 14 year old, so it's based on age. So the first year we gave those who were born from the 1st of June, 2004 to the 31st of May, 2005, meaning this year we're starting from the 1st of June, uh, 2006 to the 31st of May 2000 and, um, 2005 to 2006. So 14 year olds basically, whether they are in school and out of school. And I think the most common questions that have been coming now is that we have the COVID situation. Exactly, schools I was getting are to that. Are closed. Mm -hmm. So how are the girls going to get this vaccination? Mm -hmm. So what we have said is that the girls can go to any school that is nearest to them. And what we have found out from research is that most of the girls actually live closer to their school. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few girls who will stay further from where they go to school. So if, for example, I'm in boarding school and the school is closed where I go to, um, to school, I'm not in school, that means that I'll go to the nearest school or I can go to the nearest health facility. Mm -hmm. Or indeed, we've put up some mobile sites that we have during Child Health Weeks that any of these girls can access. But uh, this vaccine is just during this period or I can go to the clinic with my 14 year old who missed something uh, during child health week. So, n so we just give it during child health week and depending on how we see the uptake, we'll do what is called a mop up, but we do, it's, it's from the 22nd to the 27th. So every girl is going to go and we found the majority of the girls um, got vaccinated during that time. Of course, if somebody misses, that, for example, if they were absent or they were sick or for some reason they were not in class, like last year, the day we were giving, we did give some time for, for them to go and get from the health facility. Okay. But after that, we get them off from the health facility and do it a year. So it's an annual vaccine that the girls get. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. I've been talking to Dr. Sharon Kapambo. We've been uh, talking issue of uh, HPV vaccine and how that is being rolled out and received by community and society. And we touched on other health issues concerning women as well. But of course, we cannot finish the show without having our male crush for today and our male crush for today is dr havazoka listen to what he had to say about women All right, that message from our male crush, who is the ESZ president, Dr. Luvinda Hawazoka, wraps up Woman 360 for today. Thank you so much for having stayed with us. Join us next week at the same time, 21.30, on a Sunday for more information that will celebrate, elevate, and inspire the woman. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Judy Ngulube.